Okay, so the exercise we're doing today is looking at setting up signals using a function generator labeled arbitrary function generator and an oscilloscope which is also nicely labeled as digital oscilloscope. That'll be used to actually monitor the signals we're putting out of the signal generator. So let's focus on the signal generator first. There's a whole load of functions you can change on this. If you look at the vertical line of grey buttons, top one just called function, that'll give you, if you look over here, square wave, push it once, sawtooth wave, push it again, noise, again ARB, and right on the left hand side sine wave. Okay. You've got frequency option, you've got amplitude option, offset, duty cycle, and point and value for more detailed measuring on the ARB later on. Now all we're using today is the function, frequency, amplitude, offset and duty cycle. The task we have in front of us asks us to set up a sinusoidal waveform with peak to peak voltage of 6 volts and a frequency of 20 kilohertz. So first of all let's make sure we're on sine wave, which we are. If we weren't we just cycle through that function button until sine wave is displayed. Next we want an amplitude of 6 volts peak to peak. This amplitude window here is currently showing volts RMS and a different value. So we need to select amplitude to change that push 6 and then choose the appropriate units which here is VRMS we don't want but on the left there we have V peak to peak so peak to peak voltage 6 volts peak to peak that is set. It's asking us to use a frequency of 20 kilohertz so again we push frequency freak flashes and then 20 and push the kilohertz button straight away we're in 20 kilohertz and that's it. But nothing's coming out of there right now. So later when we need to actually apply the signal to something, we will be pushing this button labeled output. Until that time, it's just sitting there ready to go, but nothing's happening. We'll be measuring the signal on the oscilloscope. So if we drag the camera up, you can see the oscilloscope here. We'll be doing this on channel one, which is this BNC terminal we'll be connecting the coax lead to. Um, we'll get the display which is currently nothing so it's just a straight yellow line. And we'll be interrogating this oscilloscope to see what the function generator was actually giving us. So in order to do that we're going to have to connect our probe. So this is the oscilloscope probe a nice pull back there to get a clip onto wherever we're going to probe. You see it's also got a return lead here which will help to keep noise out of the system and on the other end your BNC type connector on your coax cable which we will be connecting straight onto that channel there. There we go. So that's connected. What we've not done so far is connect the function generator. So the connector's already in place, so I'll just drag the camera down. But I'll take that off again. So again we're using this this particular BNC connector on the coax lead, for which the other end in this current experiment comes to two crocodile clips the red being for the signal and the black being for the signal return and noise cancellation so what we'll do is again looking at the function generator which we set up the values for we'll apply this to the main on the output there's two options here the sync for synchronizing and the main for the main output. Now, if we want to do this in a cheap and cheerful way, 
we can literally just connect the return lead of the signal generator to the return lead of the scope get better connection in there and the signal lead of the function generator to the signal probe of the scope and that's the only connection you need for direct measurement but nothing's happened on the scope so we need to set the output into operator mode on the function generator by pushing the output button straight away that's kicked into life a signal has appeared on the oscilloscope which will give us some kind of information if we want to get a quick reference for that if we think we've not got the right setting on the oscilloscope we can push auto set I suspect it's done its own thing there already and it's given us representation there now to get maximum detail from that we might want to broaden the time base to the x-axis for which we go to this con this line here on the controls the horizontal control the scale this is for the time base and we can just change that time base widen it out so ideally we want to get a full cycle it just seems to be slightly overshooting there we we'll just change the position right at the extreme of the screen is probably good enough for what we want but if we get that down to a slightly different time base we get almost two full cycles on we can then look at how they affect our readings this particular oscilloscope gives you some automated readings um, but what it does give you at the bottom here is the scale for the y-axis so this tells us that one square of these graticules, one big square there has a vertical size of one volt so we can see one, two, three and a bit volts going up above the zero line indicated by where that little yellow tag is and one, two, three and a bit coming down so we've got more than six volts peak to peak there and indeed there's a preset measurement giving us 6.4 volts peak to peak it's also telling us our frequency is 20 kilohertz but it's varying away a little bit maybe some instability in the function generator um, but we can measure that by looking at the time base so again um, we have a value here 10 microseconds per big square and in one cycle getting one two three four five big squares that's 50 microseconds now if you want to get the frequency 1 over 50 times 10 to the minus 6 which hopefully comes out as 20,000 which gives us the 20 kilohertz we're on so that's how you would read that from the trace to calculate the period you look for the time between equal crossover points on the x-axis or the time between two peaks on a perfect sine wave or the time between two troughs again for this one using the time base of, for the x-axis again 10 microseconds per square we've got the five squares 10 microseconds per square we've got 50 microseconds that would be the period which is indeed what's being reflected in the automatic reading here give or take some slight variances so that's the first task